Assalamu alaikum and good evening. This is Witness and I'm your host, Katrina Hussain. If you've been watching television at all yesterday and today, there is only one story that is dominating the headlines. And that is the conviction of Pakistani cricketers for spot fixing. Now, it has dimensions beyond just the men found guilty. It has implications for the entire social fabric of Pakistan. Cricket, the gentleman's game. Now a game dragged down low by, unfortunately, three men from Pakistan. They are not the first. They certainly won't be the last. And it is not just a problem that is endemic to Pakistan. There are other cricketers from other countries that have been accused of or involved in match fixing. Spot fixing is a new phrase. Match fixing was literally when a team would throw a match to upset the bookies and the betting that would go on to it. Spot fixing is a whole different ball game where these men, now let's talk about them, former test cricketer and one day cricketer Salman Bhatt, captain of the Pakistan team, Mohammad Asif and of course Amir. Now young, impressionable, whatever. What did they do? Spot fixing. I'm going to let the experts define to you what it is because I don't want to get it wrong because I'm no expert on cricket. But I do know one thing. As a teenager, I was fixated on Pakistani cricket. My idols were cricketers. I could rattle off statistics of batting and bowling and how many matches won and how many lost off the top of my fingertips. I was obsessed and in fact here is a confession of a lifetime. I wanted to be the world's first Pakistani female cricket commentator. I'm glad I didn't ever go in that direction. Instead, I'll stick to my job of trying to find out what's going wrong. The latest news coming out from London now, where they were convicted in Southwark Crown Court. The Press Association reports that they are good. their sentencing will now happen tomorrow. The court has adjourned for the day. So let's find out what the implications are. My first guest in the studio, Senator retired Anwar Baig a former member of the Senate Sports Committee who spoke out vocally on several occasions when he was in the Senate about the problems regarding sports in the country, particularly the cricket board and cricket itself. My second guest today is Dr. Noman Niaz. He is a well-known sports analyst, written several books, eight books if I'm not mistaken, and has of <coughs> course anchored shows as well pertaining to cricket. And he's quite a cricket buff is probably not the right word, I'd say crit cricket maniac. <laughs> and both of you are, I guess. Thank you. Senator, I don't even know where to begin here. What went wrong? Katrina, uh, it's a very sad day for Pakistan and particularly cricket. Uh, coming straight to the point, I think uh, to start with, I would uh, blame the Pakistan Cricket Board for the mismanagement of what they've been doing over the past so many years. Uh, and particularly in the last three years. Uh, these issues, like th these three uh, young cricketers who have now been convicted in the UK, uh, if you recall, and I'm sure the viewers would, would know, uh, most of the uh, people in this country follow cricket uh, very closely. Yep. Uh, in the last series uh, in England, uh, the ICC made a complaint to the Pakistan Cricket Board that they've got doubts about these three cricketers and they should be investigated and suspended. But unfortunately at that time, uh, the former chairman of the cricket board, Mr. Jaz, but uh, he gave a deaf ear to it and he never bothered. In fact, he blamed the England uh, cricket team for match fixing and all that. Mm, so. I remember that. Uh, Senator, I'm then, going to just interrupt you for one minute yeah. here because I'm joined at the telephone now by Mr. Naseem Siddiqui, who is Express's correspondent in London, who's covering the trial. So let's just get an update okay. and then go sure, back into the sure, telephone sure. first. Uh, Mr. Naseem Siddiqui, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for joining me here tonight. First of all, tell us exactly what happened in London today. I'm told that the cricketers have uh, uh, given a petitions for clemency <coughs> to the court. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Zanseem, can you hear me? Okay, I'm sorry, uh, we seem to have lost the phone connection, but they'll, they'll restore it. So I may interrupt okay. you again, but my okay, apologies. No problem, no Let's problem. go back to what you were saying. Okay. The, uh, Mr. Jasper, the former chairman, turned a deaf ear. And then he, in, in, and in fact, the uh, he made a counter statement accusing them. With the result that over the past year and a half, 
the relationship between the Pakistan Cricket Board, the ICC and all the other uh, cricket boards were at the lowest step. So right. much so, the Australians even called uh, Mr. Butt a buffoon and a joker. I mean, they, okay. they went to that, that level. Now, when these boys were, uh, uh, they, they were suspicious about these three kids, they never bothered. So obviously, the matter was raised at various levels and finally criminal charges were uh, thrown at them early this year. Now, had uh, Ijaz Bhatt acted at that time, uh, suspended these boys, sent them back to Pakistan, made our local inquiry, and probably they could have got away with minor uh, sentences or suspensions or whatever. or whatever. But it never happened. But now, of course, that's history. That's history. Uh, the point is that if at all anybody is to be blamed, the three boys are to be blamed. There's no doubt There's about no doubt, that. Huh? But I think the responsibility lies with the Pakistan Cricket Board. The <clears throat> Cricket Board in the last tenure of Mr. Butt, I think, this is my assessment, I've been t accusing them right in the Senate meeting Absolutely, when I, I was there, those, yeah. that they are involved in uh, betting, they are involved in match fixing, and so much so, I also have suspicion that senior management of the Pakistan Cricket Board are also involved. Oh my God, and, that's a serious allegation. And, 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 and uh, bo the, the biggest bookie in Lahore was a very close relative of a top official of the Pakistan Cricket Board. The point is that when you have these kinds of people in the management, these young lads, I mean, uneducated, with fa family background, they fall prey to all this. Of course they will. They come under pressure. Like today, I was uh, watching the television. They, uh, they said that, uh, or yesterday, I think, they said uh, the captain, uh, but pressurized me. Pressurized I'm a Khan said. Let, so, let's get, uh, Naseem Siddiqui joins okay. us now. Uh, Naseem Siddiqui, Express's correspondent in London, covering the trial. Uh, Naseem, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for joining us. Tell us what, is, uh, my, uh, what, what are those young uh, cricketers now thinking about? I, I know you've spent some time with them. And what is the latest from London on the court proceedings? Here, yeah, the boys, all of them are very much worried. They are looking nervous uh, and they know that uh, they will be sent to the prison now. So today, uh, when the court was started, Mr. Uh, uh, Amir's uh, lawyer and uh, Mother Majid lawyer put a petition that uh, uh, they should be given a uh, less sentence because they pleaded guilty before. Right. So uh, judge, judge took time and then again he started uh, at 2 o'clock. And then Mazhar Majid uh, said that he was not that much involved. He has given uh, plenty of money to the players. I was just a mediator in between the bookies and the cricketers. Right. That's what Mazhar Majid is saying. Yeah, that's Mazhar Majid says. Now, is there an appeal for clemency from Salman Bhatt and uh, Mohammad Asif? Yeah, bo uh, both of them and Mazhar Majid as well. They have uh, asked for a uh, less uh, sentence. And the court has been urgent today and tomorrow it's, we are hoping that uh, some decision will come tomorrow. All right. And, and Naseem, if you can also tell us, uh, what is the British media now saying about this? I mean, we're watching the electronic channels as well. What is the general perception in London? Do you think that this is going to be conducive to the judge granting any kind of appeal? No, no, judges, uh, there's nothing, no confusion over here. The British media, they are asking the players that uh, you, uh, you have pleaded guilty or you are going to ask for any concession in the uh, sentence and they are asking the players that the government of Pakistan is not helping you. Where is your high commission? Where is your PCB? Mm -hmm. Nobody is here. At least somebody from high commission should be here for the sympathy uh, because they are here for the Pakistanis and you all are Pakistanis and we can't say, see anybody from your country, not high commission, nobody from PCB and not from the high officials of Pakistan. That is sad indeed. And Naseem, I'll make this the last question. Um, uh, all three of them now, they are uh, possibly likely to be given sentences tomorrow. The maximum sentence, of course, can be up to seven years. Will they then be directly taken from the court to prison? Is that what happens in London? Yeah, definitely. The maximum prison for the first count is two years and for the second count is seven years. So it's all together is maximum nine years. So it's can it run concurrently? I mean, is it possible that the, it can be made or it has to, uh, they will run separately? Um, it, this is the discussion of the judge. He will decide that 
how much uh, that is the maximum so he will be deciding how much he has to be given and if the sentence has been given they will be directly taken from the court to the prison yes. all right naseem siddiqui our correspondent in london thank you for joining us on this rather sad day uh, we will of course be in touch with you tomorrow to find out exactly what is going to happen um uh, senator if you'd like to complete what yeah. you to say but before that if i can just make a comment on on what sure, naseem sure. siddiqui is saying it's going to be a terrible image of watching these boys come out in handcuffs. They will come out now in handcuffs and they will go into prison vans. It's going to be very depressing for the entire population. I, I think it's uh, a shameful day for the country. And uh, I was watching some international uh, television uh, stations last night. And believe me, it was so embarrassing the way they've been accusing. I mean, it says Pakistani players, Pakistani sportsmen. We have enough on our plate as far as the political uh, stuff yeah. is concerned. With this uh, problem of sports, what kind of image are we sending? I mean, I'll just tell you, a few uh, hours ago, I was at a diplomatic reception. Believe me, six or seven ambassadors approached me, and since they know that I've got a keen interest in cricket and I took up these issues when I was in the Senate, they asked me, okay, what the hell is happening? Yeah. And believe me, I felt so embarrassed. I mean, there was no explanation I could give. We have no because the point is this, that we are being tainted as a nation of crooks and uh, uh, corrupt people. I mean, it's it's a very sad, sad, day, for sad us, day for us. Believe me. Let's get um, Dr. Naman Niaz into the conversation here. Dr. Niaz, one of the problems, of course, in cricket <coughs> is um, when we, we look at the game, we're watching the game. Pakistan cricket has been tainted before. We've had issues of ball tampering, accusations, all different <coughs> kinds of accusations. Um, but nobody, as, as far as I know, please correct me if I'm wrong, Nobody's ever been convicted before. They've been fined. They've been banned. Have there ever been convictions of this nature? There have been convictions of certain cricketers, but not related to cricket. Right. They that, committed yeah. certain other crimes, and they were penalized and uh, banished. But that's not <coughs> the case. That has nothing yeah. to do with cricket. This no. is for the first time in cricket's history since 1876 that somebody has been convicted on the pretext, you know, uh, just uh, revolving around cricket. So that is indeed very sad. I would like to correct you, though it's very difficult, often very difficult to correct women. <laughs> cricket has never been a gentleman's game. It's a misnomer. Okay. Know, the Mecca of cricket, the Sabbath of cricket, which is known as Lord's today yes. in London, it was actually a casino. Oh. And Thomas Lord hired it. There was a, a gentleman, green gentleman uh, cap club uh, where the matches used to be fixed between All England 11 and Nottinghamshire. Okay. And the first ever gentleman a cricketer who was penalized and who committed to the fact that he had fixed a match was William Lambert in 1817. So and this is a pretty yeah. old crime. And it's after, not yeah. new, is it? And after his confessions, he was poisoned to death. Oh, so yeah. it is still an enigma that how did he die, actually die, and who killed him. Secondly, if you see, uh, this has been a very tricky uh, thing. There was an Alfred Men against fast bowler in 1863. He betted 450 pounds, <coughs> deliberately lose the match for Canterbury. Wow. And then there was another guy. Edward Pooley, who went to New Zealand and England with the England team in 1873, and uh, he ensured that five of the players they are going to get out without scoring. It exactly happened. He won fifty dollars and was eventually uh, penalised for that. So now, just That's according 19th to century yeah, cricket. so this is now according to the historical perspective, gentleman's game was just a misnomer. <laughs> Coming back to the fact that yes, cricket has been a geopolitical phenomena that a black uh, batsman facing a white bowler holding a red ball in the hand. Mm. So it is exactly what C.L.R. James said. Now, here, coming to this fact, this is <coughs> unfortunately ironic because we have been living in a world of self-denial. I totally agree with Senator Anwar Beg, but I'll just elaborate one point, mm -hmm. that it's not a question of defending these players because greed comes naturally to human beings. It happened to them. What were the vulnerability factors that we have to cogitate and contemplate because it's a huge debate. But coming on to the fact that I'm not absolving them of what they did, but at the end of the day, we have never been able to actually uh, imply and enforce institutions. We never had the institutional value. Cricket in the developed world is a culture. Cricket has institutions. Here, what <coughs> happened, like he said, it was not the blatant incompetence, whether deliberate, unintentional, inadvertent. But fact is that these players, these boys could have really been saved. Now, here I'm not talking about saving their careers. Should they have been saved? No, I, I, I'm elaborating. Yeah. Uh, these boys, they shouldn't have been saved because what they did and uh, because uh, we needed, intended to save their careers. No. We should have they, saved them before they fell into this trap. No, no, no. Now I'm coming to I'm not, a point. I'm not just staying. I'm no. talking about falling into the yeah. trap of getting That, that is again a different cause, but what I'm trying to, you know, uh, tell you here. The fact is that the 
the Pakistan Cricket Board should have known that the anti-corruption law of the ICC had four provisions where these boys could have been withdrawn immediately after the incident took place and in-house committee should have been instituted. When you say this incident, you're talking about when the undercover reporter from, uh, or yeah. when the story broke. Uh, the, yeah, exactly. You're about when the story so broke. they could have withdrawn <coughs> these boys and in-house committee should have been instituted and if ever the PCB keeping in view the global perspective the image of Pakistan we are already very low on credibility if they had they absolved them ICC would have never intervened why because ICC is not a governing body it's a legislative body mm -hmm. and it runs on the vote of the uh, full members of the <coughs> ICC and right. Pakistan being one one secondly now diplomatically you must be knowing that in England in case if uh, there is a sensitive issue and no matter how heinous a crime has been committed if the governments, respected governments, they find out that there could be a diplomatic upheaval or within England if, the, if it could infringe, a decision could infringe the emotions of a majority society, uh, you know, uh, yeah. community, uh, <coughs> the uh, Crown Prosecution Service had the right not to proceed and mm. not to decide upon. Right. So this is the fact that we did not do our homework and, and it has like dented. And Siddiqui was saying yeah. that nobody from the High Commission yeah. is so turning this, up. This apathy, this apathy is actually one of the causes, mm -hmm. one of the causes one of, the of causes. such happenings that we just left them high and dry. I'm not defending the players, mind yeah. you. But, we but I'm just trying to say culpable. that we never knew what we were doing. Secondly, uh, why these players they became vulnerable, why actually they committed this, uh, you know, uh, thing, this farce. Now, this is also happening, it's not restricted to Pakistan alone. This is happening everywhere. But their cricketing bodies are financially very viable, very strong. There is a tinge of racial bias. The West is, has always been vying for Pakistan for one reason. That we were the people from Asia, those who stood up and then actually took the right of veto from England and Australia. That happened in 1973. Okay. Right. So we shone, we were the people, those who actually shone uh, them off their powers. So there has been a bias, but you know, against what? Pakistan in particular. But this is but we have been self-inflictive too. We so we have to take the blame. We're going to take a short commercial break over here. <coughs> this is uh, one of the points I want to raise over here. We want to continue about this. Uh, it's a sensitive issue, but um, of the various different things that we have talked about. Racism is also an element that I think we can't afford to neglect. So we're going to return uh, after this break and we'll try to go deeper into the causes of what lies at the root, at the heart of Pakistan's cricket world. This is more after a short break. Please stay with us. Welcome back to Witness. I'm now joined by a third guest. Haris Khalik joins us now. He's a social commentator, a mad cricket fan, a columnist, and an activist. You're wearing a lot of hats today, Harris. Um, uh, just to recap a little bit of what the discussion was before you joined us, we talked about, of course, what has happened and, and all the other issues, but Dr. Naman Yaz raised a very interesting point also. He said that there's, uh, there can also be a certain element of racism, and that has been a tag that has been attached to Pakistani players for the past 20, 30 years, if I'm not mistaken. And it's always been a lot of, you know, cr Pakistani cricketers have always been treated with a little bit of I don't even know what the right word for it is. Disdain. Disdain. Really? Um, well, I'm a little cynical today. I mean, as <laughs> Katrina, you always uh, invite me on a day when I really feel cynical about what's happening around <laughs> us. And, uh, well, I'm a great fan of Dr. Noman Niazis, and he's very objective. And, and, of course, there's a latent sort of racism prevalent everywhere in every uh, field, in, uh, you know, every sphere of, of uh, uh, global life, as it were. You know, I mean, there are there is... Uh, so it's very latent. But you see, when it comes to cricket and when it comes to Pakistan, I don't know what uh, Dr. Nia said, but most of it, I think, is self-inflicted. Uh, That's exactly what and, he said. That was his last phrase before the break. Right. So, so it, 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 is, it is that. And, um, I mean, they did the same to Hansi Cronier. Azaruzdin yeah. was also uh, dishonored, uh, dis dishonorably removed. Uh, he was one of the best batsmen India had ever produced. Hansi Cronio was one of the best cricketers South Africa had ever produced. So I don't think it's just about that. I think there's something, something deeper than that. And it's not just about cricket in Pakistan. Um, it is about, uh, you know, all walks of life, so to speak. And, uh, I mean, why Salman Bhatt and the other two cricketers who were with him were actually unlucky. I mean, that's how... That this, they got caught. That's how that they got caught. I mean, the whole country, the whole state of Pakistan... <coughs> is actually um, uh, run by not all of them but most of them people are doing all sorts of things and they get away with that that's the culture in which we live there are there's a complete loss <laughs> of values there's a complete breakdown of our value system if there was one i don't know 
but you know, but I have, but uh, but I, I I have seen myself uh, over the past uh, you know few decades at least that you know things have uh, have uh, uh, deteriorated. Uh, society is fragmented, and there's no. I mean, you know, people follow. I mean, you you have role models. Your your political leadership, your uh, your uh, uh, you know public heroes, public public figures. public figures. They are. They are your role models, and there are no role models to follow. I mean, who would Salman but follow? I mean, he's a kid. Come on. I mean, you can you can't just put all the blame on these three, uh, you know, teenagers or people who are in their early twenties. I mean, they were perhaps teenagers when they started uh, thing, doing all this. Yeah. Should so I, it's just should I it's just because uh, yeah, I just, went, to, I went, just went. want to side with him. Imran Khan grew up watching a role model called Fazal Mahmood. Salman but was growing up watching a role model called Salim Malik. With a tainted image, so right. that is what you have to keep in mind. One, secondly, we we lost the perspective of national pride, and it is not only restricted to cricket because the first cricket emblem was actually designed by Yawa Saeed's sister, Fazal Mahmood's wife, and Mia Muhammad Saeed, the first unofficial captain of Pakistan, his yeah. daughter. She made a Shaheen, and because of that pervas thing and high flying, and on a crescent that was depicting Pakistan. So people were actually proud to wear the green baggy green so, cap and also so this jacket. The now, yeah. now the worst part is I'm a cricket collector of memorabilia. Yeah. So I purchased Pakistan cricket blazers being sold by the Pakistan players. Okay. So here, I'm sorry to use that slang, but we have prostituted the national pride just for money. So that is the reason where we have gone wrong. We are living in a world of self-denial. Uh, there is a moral denigration. And this is the reason that these players they become more vulnerable. Do you agree with that, Harris? Well, that's what I was saying in, in perhaps in different words. I mean, Dr. Niaz is far more articulate, much more articulate than I am. And he's a cricket collector also. Okay, but but, but it's, it's actually it. quite sad. I mean, uh, on a serious note, this is quite sad. And I remember, you know, I was... I was remind when I looked at the, you know these boys. I mean, in this morning's newspaper and last night, somebody mm -hmm. told me that you know they have been uh, uh, charged, uh, found guilty, and uh, and they are. I don't know if they have announced the. They're going to announce it today. The or verdict not? comes in tomorrow. Uh, the verdict comes tomorrow. The sentencing. Um, the sentence comes in tomorrow. But that's very sad. I looked at their faces, and you know what kind of it's it's actually it's a reflection on what on what the the country the society is going through, uh, from top to bottom. Unfortunately. And okay, yeah. I was reminded of a, of a very small, if you, if you allow me to just quote from Kashful Mahjoub. Hmm. You know, Hazrat Data Ganj Bakhsh Ali Hajveri's, uh, uh, you mm -hmm. know, this uh, uh, seminal work. Uh, he talks about a man, I mean, there's an anecdote uh, in that book, if I remember correctly. Um, he talked, I mean, there's a very pious, saintly man sitting and, and, you know, and speaking to his disciples, sermonizing and taking questions and all that. And a young man who is his son, the saints, the pious man's son, enters uh, you know in intoxicated and in a, and with a couple of other people who you know whose company uh, you wouldn't like and he comes and he swears at his father and he keeps swearing at his father for a while and then he leaves so the people who are present there in the company they ask uh, you know the the spies the, 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 the saint the buzur the sufi that you know why can't you you know i mean What's happening? I mean, he's Why your did son. You take this? Yeah. So he said that you know, uh, it's very interesting because what he says is very interesting. And of course, I mean, it's a, there's a lot, there's a lesson to be drawn from there. He said, you know, um, I and my wife were, were hungry for many days, and uh, the night he was conceived, this boy was conceived. We had eaten, we ate the food that was sent to us by the corrupt ruler of the city. The shahriyar sent us something to eat which we would have normally not eaten because he's utterly absolutely corrupt but we ate that food and that night this boy was conceived so there's little that i could do about <laughs> it and i think that that but is what deep meaning when i looked at when i looked at salman's picture i i mean of course i'm cast no persians <laughs> being casted on on you know his his biological no no no, no not at all we're talking about but we're talking parable, about the we're talking about we're talking about the the uh, the society in which we live where corruption where uh, you know integrity has no meaning uh, left at all and where and it's not just corruption it's values you know it's, it's values. complete value i want to take this uh, <coughs> senator this is a thing now the the this mazhar majid uh, person was secretly filmed uh, accepting 150000 pounds in cash from this journalist as a part of the arrangement to rig the games and presumably he kept some for himself and passed it on but let's just say that it was okay 100000 pounds that's a lot of money for a young cricketer from a possibly background, it would have been more money than they would ever have seen 
Katrina, I, I would, uh, no, what I'd like to say is this, that uh, the boys have been caught, they've been paid. But unfortunately, I, what I don't see in this proceedings is that who's the person behind Mazar Majid? Yeah. I mean, nobody has <laughs> traced uh, the background to it. I mean, so Mazar, I assume. somebody has to be there, some big guns has to be there. Right. But the story closes at Mazar Majid. Who are the people uh, behind Mazar Majid? Point is this: that where is the ICC uh, anti-corruption squad committee? Yeah. Uh, committee. You okay. see, uh, where is the Pakistan Cricket Board squad? The point what I'm trying to say is this: that these boys have been caught. We have to take the blame that they've been caught red-handed and they are being punished tomorrow. But the point is this: now we've got to look forward. I mean, what has happened? Just forget no, about I'm it. I'm not going to forget about it because no, you see, this the is point. No, the, the, the Katrina, what I'm trying to say is this: now these guys, have, their cricket is gone. Their cricket is gone. Okay. But can we get these boys at least? You know, can we? Should we be doing something to try and you know get their sentences reduced to get them back to Pakistan? Uh, to, listen, I mean, what is uh, our uh, the, uh, your uh, correspondent in London just mentioned that the High Commissioner was not there. Was not there. That, but that and for no, me. I mean. Uh, I've got all sympathy for the High Commissioner for the reason that he supported these boys initially yeah. and then he withdrew that support when he knew that the guys were involved. In fact, then he wrote a letter to the patron of the board, uh, the, the, that's the President of Pakistan, uh, that uh, the Pakistan Cricket Board misguided me. And this guy is a buffoon and he needs to be removed. It that's Mr. But. Ijaz Bhatt. The yeah. point what I'm trying to say is this, that the whole script if anybody is to be blamed, I think it's the Pakistan Cricket, cricket Board, board which has to be blamed. And uh, Dr. Naman, yeah. I want to ask you a specific question. You've mm. traveled with the Pakistan Cricket team on a couple of tours. Um, I don't know much about that aspect of the game, but isn't it the responsibility of the management and the Cricket Board to protect yes. the players from unsavory people approaching them or yes. taking them to bars or, you know, we hear these stories about, oh, they went to a bar or they were, I don't know, a report about cricketers smoking marijuana on a beach in the West Indies back in the 90s yeah, yeah, and stuff. Yeah, that's true. 80s. 80s, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. Whose job is it to protect young, vulnerable, emotionally vulnerable people? I mean, you don't take kids and then let them lose in a society where they don't have a, 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 a moral graph, if I can... Um, use that word. Katrina, this is a self-explanatory question, but since I have been uh, part of the Pakistan teams on about seven or eight tours, what I could contemplate is what I have seen myself. Number one, there's an ICC code of conduct, mm -hmm. which actually has to be followed uh, by uh, the respective cricket boards, number one. And number two, and it is a detailed, detailed document, then there is a code of conduct of an individual board, right? So these players, they sign a contract, a code of conduct. And according to that, they have to abide by a certain rules. Now, who is going to implement? Now, this is the question. In this specific case, you'll be shocked to know, and you'll be shocked in your socks, that when Pakistan were touring Australia in early 2010, and what happened was that Mazar Majid was seen by the ICC. They knew that they were trying to trace him, that he had certain links for two, two and a half years. He had 30 bank accounts with a, a total cumulative wealth of 704,000 pounds and still they were suspecting, they were skeptical about this gentleman. They warned the Pakistan Cricket Board. There was a deaf ear applied to that. But ICC also has double standards. Now why? This same gentleman was seen with the Pakistan players in, the, uh, in England in their dressing rooms. The manager who is supposed to implement all, all this discipline and etc. 70 plus year old who was hardly been who able was, uh, to uh, say. Right? And, and you know the shocking part is that the management itself they were allowing Mazar Majid, they were allowing the players to communicate to that gentleman, See? they were sharing the same vehicles. So See? now who is going to implement? So you make what did I say board? earlier on? So now is you tell me it board? confirms it. Yeah. So now who is so it? So in, in effect, it's really... I don't want to absolve these kids, okay? I know they are guilty, but, and there's a huge but here. Harris, I'll come to you on this one. Sorry, when, but you know what? Yeah, last, okay. last thing I want yeah. to add because he will then, uh, you know, just Elaborate re on that. Re yeah, reinforce on that. The fact is that every sportsman of international <coughs> repute, they have a psychological, a different psychological, you know, impact. And what they do, they, you know, having imbibing that stardom, and then they're bound to break rules. That's a natural tendency. So I personally problem. feel I personally feel that the you know it is the powerlessness of the management that actually
actually reflects as a, the powerfulness of these players. So that is unfortunately, the, actually these, these gentlemen, they are not the culprit. But at the end of the day, it is the powerlessness, a powerless management and your top hierarchy. And exactly You're what he was saying. You're saying powerless, I would say actually morally corrupt. And yes, um, and indifferent. Uh, indifferent, indifferent. Indifferent. Indifferent and apathetic. So that's apathetic let, me, let me ask you a simple question. I'm going to pick up on this factor because like, you know, when you read in the newspapers about celebrities in Hollywood and, you know, they crash their cars or they get drunk or they beat up on somebody or they mm. go to bars, Leonardo DiCaprio busted somebody's nose or whatever. They have problems. Celebrities have problems. We lionize people and then we, in, and then we take some kind of perverse pleasure when they crash. Uh, what, what's behind that? I'm not just talking Pakistan, it's worldwide, isn't it? It is. We love the Pakistan, fact that Leonardo DiCaprio but, was but, hauled uh, up to jail. But unfortunately in Pakistan, you don't have to be uh, a celebrity to break rules. <laughs> you see, that, that may be um, the case in, in uh, some other countries, in, uh, in Western countries or other countries. Yeah. Uh, but in Pakistan, everybody loves to break rules. And if you uh, abide by, by rules or, or follow uh, laws, you're considered weak, meek, and uh, an idiot because that's not how uh, that's not how society is working. Society is working. But do you think society the court should have like just that. on this but case should we have given the court should the court have given some leeway to these boys for the fact that they were celebrities that went to their head? Uh, they uh, why should they? I mean, do they? I mean, that it, it doesn't work like that. You can't have they shouldn't. Laws for and and the, you, you can't have different laws for different the, people. And the these, guys, laws these boys... Cooperation. You Did see Salman the, Khan, the actor, go to yeah. prison for killing deer in a you yeah. know endangered yeah. species yeah. in yeah. India? Yeah. No, he didn't. You see, I, India, I don't think India uh, is always a good example, although there's a lot to learn from India otherwise. But um, if something hasn't really worked in India, it doesn't mean that it can be a standard. Should we give or, breaks or, to our young people? Or, no, but you see, it's not just about, it's, it's about educating our youth. It's about bringing normalcy to their lives. It's about telling them that it is important not to cheat. You know, either yeah. there's no, yeah, there's this, no this there are two cheat. extremes. Cheat. Either, uh, either people uh, bet and gamble and fix matches <coughs> or they become members of the Tablidi Jamaat. There's no balance. There's no, you know, th there's no a normal, decent, balanced individual uh, in Pakistan left anymore. So you have these two extremes. <laughs> so unfortunately, that is that is that is the case that you see on on a on a, on a cricket field yeah. also. Okay, so, I'm going to take a so break. So either they here. take bribes and fix matches, like they did it even in 1999. By the way, they did that. Very few people and I think say the that. The key word is didn't get caught. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to take a short break over here. When we return, of course, the key question is. Uh, Senator Anwar Beg is saying this is the past, we have to put it behind us. But I did sort of want to get into the psyche of them. But now the obvious next thing is, how do we fix the problem? That's what we're going to talk about, but after a short break, so please stay with us. To witness. Well, there's one element of this whole story, of course, which we haven't discussed, and we probably won't today, but I just want to bring it into the record. The News of the World. Uh, the newspaper that actually set up this whole sting operation that resulted in these convictions, the newspaper itself has been shut down. And that happened on 4th of July. Uh, and it all, long story, but it, the newspaper itself closed down on 7th July 2011. That was this year, with numerous libel action against the newspaper in its past. And, of course, the former editor, Andy Colson, and uh, the former News of the World Royal editor Clive Goodman uh, were arrested for phone hacking and various other issues. Now, that's, that's probably not germane to our discussion today. However, Yasir Hamid, uh, a Pakistani cricketer, who got a victory against them by getting the News of the World to remove a video and story about him from their website. Um, so um, these people have been, of course, News of the World has been keeping an eye on the cricketers on that respect. Um, Mr. Big, here's the thing, though. Um, just a brief question. This kind of sting operation, these, these guys were set up. It was a sting operation by the news of the world. They have obviously targeted cricketers in the past, and the Pakistani cricketers seem to have been more of a target than, than other countries, from what I've been able to tell. I could be very wrong on this, because as I said, this is not uh, something I know about. Is that something that we uh, that is also a factor? That's one. And then if you could please come to the simple point of um, what, where do we go from here? Uh, <clears throat> number one, uh, Katrina, they were caught. Simple, whether it was a trap, whatever, they were caught red-handed. Hmm. So I think uh, whatever the courts decide tomorrow, I think the punishment has to go through. I mean, that has to be a lesson for all the upcoming cricketers, at least as far as my country, Pakistan, is concerned. Okay. Now, how do we go forward? 
my advice to the new chairman would be that in Lahore, we have a very large cricket academy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like a boarding school. Mm -hmm. I think what he needs to do is this, pick up young talent, uh, go for a talent hunt program, pick up 40, 50 boys from the country and put them in that boarding school within the uh, uh, Gaddafi Stadium. And he should employ teachers to teach them because mm -hmm. they come from rural background mostly. They do indeed. Uh, there must be teachers, there must be t taught manners, there must be counsel. Tutors, counselors, everything. The they, works. they should be taken to the we ground. We need to invest exactly. in these boys. No, no. The, uh, the cricket board is filthy rich. I mean, they, it, there's no problem for them. Okay. The point what I'm trying to say is this. You've got to build up a team. You've got to build up the mind of that child. Because, you see, they come from a weak background. The first match, they go into a five-star hotel. Uh, they get the money the next day. They are loaded. Uh, they, are, they become celebrity overnight. And then, of course, uh, everybody gets around them. And obviously, the senior players, then they try to hook these junior guys into a wrong direction. And I think uh, it is very important for the cricket board to play a very, very important role. That's number one. And a decisive number role. Two, number two, the day the guy comes in, he should be asked to declare his assets. Mm. Declaration of assets. And Justice Kayum reports, I've said it a number of times, clearly says that. And when they declare the assets, they should immediately be registered with the tax authorities. They should be given an NTM number. So that they You're know. You're telling me our cricketers don't have? No, they, nobody has. I, I'm sorry, nobody has. Nobody oh has. Nobody has. Oh dear. They should be given an NTM number so that they should know that every year they have got to uh, uh, put declare in their, their assets, return. pay their returns. And then the uh, cricket board itself must have an intelligence squad to keep on checking on their assets. So if there is a count. Uh, check on these guys on a regular base and they are in that academy I'm not saying that they will not be involved in gambling but I think we, we can, can protect them we can nurture protect them, them because they'll be, yeah. they'll be scared they'll be scared maybe to, if and today 11, more responsible and, and today 11 players are involved maybe two players are involved you see like there's no match contaminates fixing contaminates everyone you see now there's no match fixing match fixing means five six players have to be involved yeah. or it's spot fixing, spot fixing so one true. guy can do it the wicketkeeper can do it, a batsman can do it, a bowler can do it without telling but, anybody uh, else. Can I, uh, 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 here's yeah. the stupid question of the show. Um, and anybody, feel free to take this answer. Can spot fixing, like bowling a no ball in a specific over, can that t change the, the, no, no. the match? No, no, it result? cannot change the match. It cannot change the so match. So it's just betting it's on just, that one uh, Katrina, delivery? Katrina, every ball in a match today, every ball is betted upon. Every ball, Any every ball? over. I mean, it's the, wow. the, the, the volume of this gambling is billions of dollars. That's crazy. Well, Katrina, Katrina and, and, and excuse yeah. me. Yeah. And, and the base, unfortunately, is Bombay, Bombay. followed by Dubai, Dubai, followed by Lahore. Lahore? Yep. He's right. Yeah. Followed by Lahore. Okay. So no. we are number three in that position. <laughs> and don't be surprised that soon we'll be number one. Okay, now, thank Katrina, you for that depressing company. Now, 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 very quickly, I'm yeah. going to just uh, pick, it up, uh, pick it up from here. The uh, fact is that, uh, number one, you have to realize that the, the ICC <coughs> itself is very, very confused. You know how? Number one, you have an anti-corruption and security unit. You intend to marginalize corruption. <laughs> You do not have the legislative powers to actually, uh, you know, uh, get into the proceedings, the legal proceedings, because you just can't have a player. Uh, just uh, you can ban it, uh, ban a player, a specific player from international cricket, but you can't take a legal course, right? Number one, there are mechanisms which are workable. Secondly, cricket's own central economy is not being dominated by a parallel economy, which is a black economy. Yeah, the way he was saying it's Bombay, it's Karachi, it's Lahore, wherever in South Africa, Johannesburg. Dubai, yeah. So you have to identify that it's a reality. Now the third problem is that why players from Pakistan? It's not only the lack of education, because this is no excuse. Muhammad Azuruddin was double masters, Manoj Prabhakar was an MBA, Ajit Jadeja was an MBA, but they fell uh, victim to this problem. greed. Right? The fact is that your first class cricket is virtually, virtually depleted not in uh, in sense of uh, i'm talking about financial resource you have you are keep you know mm -hmm. any chairman comes in he changes the 
structure of domestic cricket, the format. What you need to do is to change the structure of the domestic cricket administration, make it a product, market it, bring an influx of money. I've seen you know, some the reason is that why these players are well matches now. now you know, you I, I'm coming to a very serious point that these players are a product of the same society <coughs> from where we come in, number one. Number two, there is a moral degeneration the way he was emphasizing upon. Sick, third important factor is that now the rate of inflation is directly proportional to the corruptibility of an individual player. Far when enough. I was playing cricket, like uh, local cricket for the regional cricket, I knew players th whose father was working, but he could come out and he was known as a spoiled brat of his family. But now both the uh, boys, they have to work with their father to support the family. So they have no security, no education. At 35, the career ends. So there is no financial security. So they are more vulnerable. How now much these are the points. Is paid though? You will be shocked to know that a first-class cricketer is paid barely three to five thousand rupees for playing one first-class match. What? Yeah, that is shocking. That is shocking. Now you have closed the departments. You <coughs> wanted to, uh, you know, copy uh, the Australian Shield cricket. I don't know whose ingenious idea was that. You have brought in regional cricket. There are no sponsors, no money. So Pakistan Cricket Board just can't, uh, you know, uh, support, uh, say, 1,100 first-class cricketers. But what about these uh, tigers and dolphins, different This is just, actually, no, no, this, no, this is T20, this is 2020. 20. Now, so again, serious cricket. and, and, and why, I was, saying, uh, why I was saying know, ICC is thoroughly yeah. confused, long matches. now they are propagating T20 for commercial, uh, within a commercial angle, yeah. Yeah. super sixes, and they are the harbinger of corruption and corruptibility. Yeah. Correct. So at one end, they want to stop and marginalize <laughs> corruption, on the other, they are uh, proliferating it. So you have to identify the ills and then strike very hard. Okay. So I totally agree with Senator Anwar Beg that we have to start this new chairman in. First, you have to enhance your own credibility. How you are going to enhance your own credibility? Because we are being looked down upon because of the fact we do not do our homeworks. We go and attend the ICC meetings. We actually succumb to their pressure. And this is why we are being taken for a ride. So we are self-inflictive. We are actually hitting our own selves. And we are allowing and giving them the space to bark on us. That's what's exactly happening. Harris, would you like to join this course? Because I'm quiet. Because one of the solutions I can think of, and maybe this is naive, but maybe the live televising of these cricket matches, if it was delayed by one over, um, you know, you see it live, but you're seeing it one over late, and the radio commentary should also be you one see, over late. My, I, Could that yeah, impede it, the gambling level? You, you know, that. Anwar says no. Well, okay. my problem is cheating, not gambling. I mean, there's there was race in Pakistan. There's race still, Derby or you know. All over the world, there's race. People gamble. Uh, gambling has a, you know, has its own problems. But as a Pakistani, as a, as a, you know, as a, as a follower <coughs> of Pakistan's cricket team, and equally embarrassed as the cricket team should be, perhaps we are more embarrassed than the cricket board. Uh, uh, you know, has anybody as told a, as a result of what this? has happened? Does no, it just they even really know? Come, they haven't really come out with a clear statement as yet. I noticed. Uh, but um, but I think cheating is a bigger issue. People used to gamble. I mean, I could gamble. Uh, gambling is not a good thing and I don't gamble. It doesn't mean I, I don't indulge otherwise also. I'm not saying that I'm a very pious person. <laughs> but gambling is not my cup of tea. But when you, but there are people who gamble. People play, uh, uh, you know, poker. They play race. Let, let it's me, not about, it's about, it's about, it's about the, the value has to be, you know, it's about cheating. You don't cheat. You don't you betray don't your country. But, uh, you don't Harris, betray I, your own question. team. You don't betray your fellow players. I Absolutely. Mean, that's it. You don't betray. I mean, but you know, one quick question. Anybody can take this one. But uh, one of the concerns I have is, like, for example, I was luckily at Mahali for the semi-final of the, of the cricket team. And when the Pakistan team lost, everybody said, oh, they threw the match. Oh, you know, it's deliberate. I mean, I've, I've now discovered when Pakistan wins, Yahoo, and when we lose, we ourselves accuse the cricket team of throwing the match. So how we are a cribbing nation, you know, like I am cribbing right now. Senator so Anwar Beg, that's also you this question. You just tell me that Mazhar Mahmood, the correspondent of the, you know, news of the world, uh, broke Majid, yeah. the story. Mazhar Mahmood. I'm not talking oh, about Mazhar Mahmood. Oh, Mazhar Mahmood. Sorry. So yeah. he actually expressed that he was tipped by one of the Pakistan players to yeah. actually go for this sting operation. So we have black sheep within. So that is no, the I don't know. Worst part. I don't know. No, but the maybe person that, who that tipped him, or you know, was not a black it, sheep. Was not necessarily a black a sheep. A whistleblower. I know is what not you're saying. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, in a but different but, uh, context, you know, you that what we Zulkan do is that we are actually self-inflicted. The Zulkarnain story. Yeah. I mean, the the wicket keeper, the wicket last keeper Zulkarnain story. Right. He lost away. Public memory is short in Pakistan. Moral and work ethics. It's a yeah. The point is, before you close down your show, I think I'd like to give a piece of advice to the new chairman. 
he has to get rid of the present mafia sitting in the Pakistan cricket board. He has to bring in new faces, professionals who are far away from this gambling business. And if he doesn't do that, Katrina, let me tell you, if within three months he'll be sucked into this mess. And the himself. vortex himself. Yeah. So, so he has to get rid of all these Johnnies oh. sitting up there. On that note, I'm afraid I'm going to have to leave it there. And we will, I would like to thank my guests, former Senator Anwar Beg, Dr. Naman Niaz, and Mr. Haris Khalik. I got your name right this time, Haris. Did I? Thank you. Finally. Absolutely. For those people who watch this program, I always mispronounce Haris's name. But thank you all for joining thank us you. today. Thank you. And I'll leave you with some simple words from uh, somebody who's <coughs> not a cricket fan per se anymore. Um, I still find it an interesting game and I do watch. But there's, as exactly what Haris was saying, there is something that you want to be proud of. There is something <coughs> where you, especially if you're overseas, you look at the Pakistan flag, the flag on PIA, the Pakistan cricket team. All these things become a symbol of national pride and we have often said that nothing unites this nation like cricket does. Has our nation now been dealt another fatal blow in our lack of unity? I so fear that tomorrow's verdict, tomorrow's sentencing will possibly be one of the few last nails in the coffin. I don't want to call it the last nail. I'll never call it the last nail, but I am scared. Katrina Sensei, Kodafis, Pakistan.